CD Projekt Red has been hard at work updating Cyberpunk over these past few years. With the recent release of Patch 2.3, support for the game continues to attract new and returning players. Because of this, today's video is an updated video guide on how to mod Cyberpunk in 2025 using Vortex Mod Manager. And if you came to this video looking for troubleshooting methods to fix broken mods for Patch 2.3 or a future patch, you might want to check out my other video that's shown on screen right now. On screen now is the video timeline listing all the information I'll be covering as we set up all of the necessary modding tools. As always, links to websites, mods, and resources will be provided in the video description, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. So there are two requirements for modding Cyberpunk. You're going to want to have a Nexus Mods account and the Vortex Mod Manager software. At least for this tutorial, that is the mod manager that I use for my game, but there are other options if you research online. Next, you'll want to download the Vortex Mod Manager software, which is also on the Nexus Mods website and will be linked down in the video description below. Just click download the latest version now, scroll down to where it asks for a manual download. It's going to tell you a couple of requirements. You're just going to click download and wait for that to finish. Now that I'm logged in, I can click start download. Once it is finished, you're just going to want to run that exe. It's going to ask you a location to install it. One recommendation I will make is that you want your Steam games and your Vortex Mod Manager and your mods to all be installed on the same drive. This will mainly reduce issues with compatibility and load times and any errors that you might otherwise encounter. So make sure that if your Steam is on your C drive, your Vortex Mod Manager should also be installed to the C drive. Go ahead and click the install button. Open up Vortex and if there isn't a shortcut on your desktop, you'll have to use the Windows key and search for the application. Now that Vortex is open, we're going to go to the top right and we're going to log in. I'm going to click Authorize and authorization was successful. Once you have Vortex Mod Manager open, you're going to want to head to the Games tab and look for Cyberpunk. There'll be a Manage box right here. You're going to click it and it's going to either auto detect your game's folder or you're going to have to input the location of Cyberpunk itself. Finding the location of your game folder is very easy. You're going to want to go to Steam, right click Cyberpunk, go to Properties, Go to Installed Files, and right here, click Browse. It'll pull up the File Explorer, and it'll show you the exact file path. In my case, I have it on my D drive. If you want to save the location of this as text, you want to right-click this right here, copy address as text, and then you can paste it into a notepad. If you're on GOG Galaxy, simply go to the top left, hit the cog wheel, go down to Settings, go to the Installing and Updating tab, and right here, Game Installation Folder, it will tell you where to check. And it'll open that up, and you'll see I have Daggerfall Unity. If you have Cyberpunk installed, it'll be in here as well. Then once you're back in Vortex, you simply paste it into this top bar here, enter it'll take you to the correct folder and then we click select folder if it asks you to confirm which platform you're using just make sure that you're using steam or gog and select the correct box very quickly we're going to make sure we have the red mod tool installed this is packaged as dlc on the cyberpunk tab right here if we right click cyberpunk go to properties go to dlc and make sure that red mod is ticked right here on this row it should automatically install it for you before we return to Vortex, we're going to want to hit play on Cyberpunk and take care of one final thing. Once Red Launcher opens up, we just want to hit this cogwheel here and make sure that Enable Mods is selected and enabled. Once that's done, there will be a Profiles tab, and if it didn't automatically set one up for you, you're going to want to create a new one. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to add Cyberpunk 2077 Profile. We're going to name it Tutorial because that's what this video is. You just click Enable, and it'll swap it over to the actual page. I think this should be set up by default already, but uh, you should be able to go to the Mods tab and view an empty mod list now. Back in Vortex, I'm going to go to Settings and the Mods tab. I'm going to make sure that my Mod Staging folder is on the same drive that we just checked that Cyberpunk was on, which was the D drive, or in the case of many other people, it'll be the C drive. You check right here, the Suggest button will tell you the exact same thing, putting the mods on the same drive as the game. I would say that keeping this defaults tab here ticked is generally recommended. In my case, I have my own staging folder set up, so just keep this ticked. I have it set manually. A final setting to check before we download our first mod would be to go to this V2077 settings tab. Right here, automatically convert legacy style archive mods to red mods on install. Not recommended, and I agree. Make sure this is grayed out. I've had this enabled in the past and it gave me a ton of troubles with mods just straight up not working. 
Navigating Nexus Mod's website to download your first Cyberpunk mod is quite simple. Head over to the Cyberpunk page, which I have linked down below, and we're going to scroll down a little bit to here where we can sort by popular. We're going to open the Cyber Engine Tweaks mod. Cyber Engine Tweaks is a scripting framework, and it allows you to open a player console, set keybinds for other mods. This is the mod that most mods depend on, and you'll want to be updating each time there is a new patch for Cyberpunk. On the description page, you'll want to scroll down and check the Requirements tab. This mod does not have any known dependencies other than the base game, which means we're fine to download this without downloading anything else. Reading the description is important because you might have notes like this, where you might have to install the latest Visual C++ redistributable for the mod to run. In my case, I already have it, but in your case, you may want to uh, just double check. To get this mod downloaded to Vortex, we're going to go to the Files tab, we're going to go to Mod Manager Download, and then we're just going to click open Vortex. I'm gonna X out of that and head over to Vortex. So it says the download has been finished. We're going to install it right here. It's gonna replace the one that I've highlighted right here. It'll just take a little while to deploy. And there we go, at the top, Cyber Engine Tweaks has been updated. I'm going to delete the old one right here by deleting the archive and this mod now works. Now let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's say you want to download this Tron Suit mod by Observe. If you go to the Files tab, you'll see that the main file requires a manual download. Read the description for more info. Now if we go down and we click the Requirements tab, we're gonna see we need Archive XL, Red for Extension, and Tweak XL. Heading over to Archive XL, we'll see that it was updated for July 17th, 2025. And just to confirm, we scroll down to the Compatibility section and we see that yes, it is updated for patch 2.3. If we go to the Requirements tab, we see it just requires red 4 ext so we're going to go over to there and we're going to see that this mod has no dependencies we're going to see that it was also updated for july 17th 2025 and should be compatible with patch 2.3 the latest patch go to the files tab mod manager download open to vortex go to the archive xl go to files go to mod manager download download it open to vortex then back on the tron suit page we go to tweak xl we make sure that it's been updated for patch 2.3, July 17th, 2025. Yes, it has been updated for patch 2.3. We're going to check the requirements for this mod. We already downloaded Red 4 EXT, so we should be good to go to the Files tab, Mod Manager, Download, Download, Open to Vortex. Once you've installed and enabled those mods in Vortex, we can then go ahead to the Files tab here and click Manual Download. I'm going to click Download, and it's going to pop up in the top right. We're going to drag this RAR file to our desktop. To extract a RAR file, you're going to have to have 7-zip installed. I'll leave a link to that program in the description below. Right-click the RAR file, go to 7-zip, go to Extract 2, and it should send it to a folder on your desktop. Right-click your Cyberpunk, go to Properties, go to Install Files, click Browse to pull up your game directory, and then just close out of Steam. We're going to situate the folders side by side here. I'm going to open the Tron Suit folder, and we're just going to side by side do a little comparison. As you can see on the right is the Tron folder with the Archive and the R6 folder. In the Cyberpunk folder, we see there's an Archive and an R6 as well. Installing this Tron suit manually into your game is as simple as highlight left clicking, dragging into here, and copying to the Cyberpunk folder. Since I already have files in these folders, I'm not going to replace the files because there's no point, but it should automatically place them in the correct location. As you can see, Archive, PC, Mod, these are the files that are going in there. And that's it, you've manually installed your mod. To double check that it works, we're going to go into Vortex, we're gonna to go to the top left here and click Launch. Now that we're in game, we should be able to add the Tron suit to our inventory by going over to the Tron page. I'm gonna highlight this top code, I'm gonna Control C, we're gonna go in game. I'm gonna hit the button that I have to open up the Cyber Engine Tweaks console, which I set to tilde. It should prompt you at the start of the game when installing Cyber Engine Tweaks for the first time, what button you want to open the console. Again, mine is tilde. I'm gonna go to this chat box here and I'm gonna control V. I'm gonna hit enter and we should have a notification on the left, looted Tron suit blue. If I go into my wardrobe here, we're gonna see that yes, we have the blue Tron suit and this is what it should look like in game. With each major update to Cyberpunk, many mods can take weeks to be updated. Some mods may be left incompatible indefinitely as they've been abandoned or discontinued by their author, requiring you to download alternative mods or revert your game to a previous version, which is the solution that I'm using for right now to keep my game working. Because of this, if your game is crashing after following this tutorial, I suggest you double check that you have all the requirements installed for each mod you download. Also, make sure each mod is actually compatible with patch 2.0. 
1.3 or whatever patch you're currently on while watching this video. As time passes, more mods will likely be up to date and work for your game. If you decide to revert your game to a previous older version, keep in mind that many mod authors hide their previous mod versions behind file archives. And in the case of Cyber Engine Tweaks, for example, you must go to Yamashi's GitHub page to download an older version. If you are having troubleshooting issues, mod errors, script errors, crashes, or your game won't launch, check out my other video regarding mod fixes for patch 2.3 and future patches. I have a slightly out of date spreadsheet that contains my mod list and shows the most essential cyberpunk mods at the very top, so when you're trying to figure out what you need to update, you might want to check out the link in the description and reference that sheet for yourself. As always, leave any questions and comments below and I will try to assist you. Thanks for watching and happy modding!